Don't let the wrong fuel injectors crash your party. Without the right parts, you're basically just building a useless brick. Today I'm going to show you the differences in fuel injectors and why you would need to run a spacer or how to like run you know, a short one versus a long one. What does that do to your fuel rail? Your fuel rail moves up, it'll move down depending on the size of your fuel injector. So one of the reasons you change out the fuel injector is because you want to run a larger CC to put more fuel to the engine. So if you have your engine turned up, bigger cam, you're running turbo, you want a lot more fuel, that way your engine stays alive. Let's look at the difference of length in the fuel injector. So we're gonna be measuring from the O-ring groove to the O-ring groove from the centers. So where the O-ring goes, if you look at this one, it's easy because the O-rings are on it. So if we measure here, we'll go from the center to center. This is about an inch and a half. So this is your traditional LS3 or LSA. This is an actual LSA injector here. So these are some of the shorter fuel injectors you'll see on the LS's. They are the shortest. And then you have a little bit longer one here. This is like a LQ9 fuel injector. So this one's a little trickier because the O-ring groove isn't quite as defined, but it's in this low spot here that it'll set. So let's measure from the center of the top to the center of this area. And this one's about uh, 1.8 inches. This is gonna be a LQ9 style fuel injector and then this one here's like an ls2 style measure from the center of the o-ring to the center of the o-ring on this and these will be pretty close to like 2.1 just roughly so about 2.1 inches this is your ls1 length fuel injector so you can see here this one's close to about two and a half kind of measuring the center of this groove the center of here it's a little easier to do with the o-ring on it because you can tell where the o-ring goes all of these are on our guides to make it really easy to tell the difference between the injectors of how long they are here we have a ly6 6 liter intake we're going to take a look at its factory injector and we'll take this off and explain why you need the injector adapter here we have an ls1 style injector and the 6 liter intake on a ly6 if you look at the difference here, there's a huge gap. So now this rail needs spaced up to accommodate this long fuel injector. Or if you went the other way with this and you ran like an LS3 injector in here, go over here to the side and you look, now this injector is way too short. So this is where you need to run our fuel injector spacer. So this would go on top. You'd put it in here and then now that brings this rail up to accommodate this injector. We have these fuel injector spacers in different lengths to accommodate all the different fuel injector and intake combinations you can have. The common question you would get is like, why don't I just buy a fuel injector that fits my fuel rail and intake? Well, sometimes you wanna run like a GM fuel injector and you can't find the right one for that spacing. This is where our injector spacers come into handy and you could put any brand of fuel injectors. Some people have certain brand preferences uh, on the fuel injectors. And this allows you to run whatever brand you want and it'll fit any of the intakes. So we have that handy little guide that makes it super simple to figure out what fuel injector spacer will go with your intake and fuel injector combination. We're going to measure the intake here and just see how big the bore is for the fuel injector. So this one's about 0.55. So that one is the most standard size you're going to see on the engines. Some of these are a little bit different if you see here on the guide. So if we look at the guide, you can see this is 0.551, which is going to be the lower section of the fuel injectors here. And there's two that are different. So like the LS3 is here on the left or the LS2, you can see it has a 0.587 intake bore, which is larger. The thing you're gonna do with that is, is we include two different sets of O-rings to accommodate if you're running this larger bore intake. They're already in the bag with the adapters, so if you need to run the larger or smaller O-ring, they're already in there. Just pick the one that fits snugly in your intake. On our fuel injector 
adapters here. Some of them are really long and we have the really short ones. So you're probably wondering why is there a spacer in with the bag of these? So depending on the length, this adapter cannot get in a shorter, we cannot machine a shorter one. So then your fuel rail needs to come up. The only time that this wouldn't work is if your fuel rail, like on a haul intake or something that bolts in this way, then you can't space it up. This factory one, you just put a spacer and then it raises the fuel rail up. So on here, if you're looking at this, we can just put a spacer between here to shim this up to accommodate this spacer. If you're in, your fuel rail is bolting here to the intake going this way, you can't move that up. Included here with the spacer is a bag of small O-rings and large. The thing to remember on your fuel injector is the upper is always the same across all LS fuel injector. So the upper is always going to run the same O-ring. For us, it's going to be the smaller O-rings here. So you just kind of hold it down into here and then just push it over and then just kind of like roll both sides at the same time. And then put a little dab of oil on here just to make sure it slides in smooth and then insert that into your fuel rail. We have our dummy fuel injector here. What this does is if you're running a dual fuel system, like two different fuels, two different fuel systems on your intake, say you have an upper and lower fuel rail, maybe you're running on the street and you don't need the second fuel rail, that's when you would plug the holes in your intake and keep your fuel rail in place to keep this in there. You would run these. This one here, this is an example of our LS1 length. You can see here it's the same as like an LS1 length fuel injector. So you just put that in there and that'll plug the holes in your intake. Let's look at the different connectors that these fuel injectors use. There's a little bit of difference between all the ones that are ran in here, um, between the LS factory connectors and the aftermarket fuel injectors. This is gonna be your truck fuel injector. See the divided area in here? This one's really common across the LS trucks. This one here is the new modern connector. This one's used on a lot of different vehicles, even in Ford products. Uh, you can see here, this is called a U-Scar. This one's really common. This is an LSA fuel injector here, LS3, same thing. Um, truck injector, this LS1 length fuel injector is the aftermarket injector here, same connector. The common fuel injector that guys like using are the natural gas fuel injectors from the Chevy CNG trucks. It's 210 pounds, which is huge for a fuel injector, so you can run a ton of boost with those. The thing to remember on those is they're really short, so it'd be like an LSA fuel injector length, but they're really high flow. The other difference is most people buy them and they forget, oh, the injector connector is different. This is where we have the wiring adapters to adapt your factory harness to this Nippon uh, connector here. So we have all the adapters. If you're unsure, just go to one of our listings, look in the images, and we have the guides that show you which connectors you need. Something to remember is a lot of these truck intakes will have these caps on here. And those caps, sometimes they don't play nice with all the intakes. So on this truck intake here, if you look, this goes down in here all the way. But other intakes, this pocket's made a little different, which it won't go down. So then this rail is basically going to be up here and it won't fit. So you'll want to remove the cap here. What the cap is doing, it just aligns the fuel injector a little more in the bore. It's not necessary, so we're just gonna remove these. We'll just grab it with the channel locks here and just kind of squeeze it a little bit and then just rock it off here. And then it just comes off. Another way is you could use a pair of diagonal cutters and just kind of pinch the side and then just cut through it. Either way, it takes the cap off, pretty simple. That wraps up our fuel injector differences. If you need any help or confused what you have, go to our website, look at all of our handy guides that make this really easy. Don't forget, we're always just a phone call away. We'd love to help you get the perfect combination for your build. Thanks for joining us today on this guide. Be sure to click the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons so you can stay up to date on informative projects like this.